Hi, this is Ed Gregory for photosincolor.com and today I'm going to show you how to create a HDR photo in Photoshop. Theme tune! Do 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 do! Ba-do point! 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 Point! That was my point dance, because today I'm going to make a point. Uh, not really. Well, no more than I usually do. Okay, so... HDR inside Photoshop. Now, there's loads of tutorials on what an HDR is, but essentially you take photographs in different ranges. So one that is correctly exposed, one that is overexposed, and one that is underexposed. You then merge these together to create an HDR high dynamic range image. They're amazing, but make sure you don't overcook them, which means push it too far. So we're gonna be looking at this in Photoshop today. This is part of my Photoshop training course. If you want these files to work along with, you can download them at photosincolor.com. So head over there, and also you can get the rest of this whole training course there. So, here we are inside Photoshop. Now there's a few ways of doing this. First of all, I have my three different exposures already imported inside of Photoshop. So I'm gonna show you if this is how you've done it. Now you must have already saved these images, so brought them in and saved them. And then you go File, and you go Automate, Merge to HDR Pro. Now within this, all you have to do is click Add Open Files, and there you go. And then you'd hit OK, and it would just do the rest from there. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna close all of these, I'm not gonna save these, and I'm gonna show you the other way of doing it. Now, inside Lightroom, you can import them from there. Inside Bridge, you can import them from there by selecting the image, right-clicking, and selecting Open in HDR Pro. But from in Photoshop, all you have to do is go File, Automate, and come into Merge to HDR Pro. Now we've got this here. All we have to do is select the files, okay? So Files or Folder, we're gonna select Files, unless you've got them all in one specific folder. And we're gonna bring this up here. And I have my one, two, three images here. I'm gonna hit open and then it's gonna pop them here. Once we've got that, all we have to do is press okay. Now what it's gonna do is it's gonna bring in each one of those photographs into Photoshop, put them in one project, and then it's gonna open the HDR Pro interface. Now, that may have taken some time, and it, the more photographs you have, if you've got, say, eight images or seven images, that's going to take a lot longer. And it's also what it's going to do is it's going to align the photographs, so if they were not taken on a tripod or the clouds have moved, it's going to do its best to align them. Now, we're inside Photoshop, and you can see, down here in the bottom side, this is my normal image, and then I have two stops too bright and two stops too dark. So this is what it's going to make it out of. Now, as default, this is usually set to 16-bit. And what that means is you can now come in here and you can make any alterations. I'm gonna quickly run through this, but I'm gonna suggest that you do not do it this way. And I'll just tell you why in a second. So essentially, you can go through here, there's some presets. I do not like these presets at all. I think they're horrible. So I would not use them. Just leave it on default here. And then what you can do is you can have edge glow. So that allows you to, how much you will allow the edge to glow because you have different tonal ranges within that. So you might want to bring that down. Strength essentially is how strong an HDR, how much do you want your dynamic range. And then you've got your tone and detail panel. Now you can move these around and you can see basically what you can create. And in my experience, it doesn't do very well at all. Um, but then you can move the, the shadow, your highlights, and essentially you can move this around to create your HDR image. I would recommend do not do this. Instead, come up here, change it to 32-bit, and what this is going to do is keep all of the information from all of these images, and what it's going to allow you to do, so it literally you're left with one slider, okay? And you can't even use that, actually, unless you deselect this. So let's just deselect, let's make sure this is selected. So we're gonna do all of our toning inside Adobe Camera Raw. Now I've already done a tutorial on that. It works just like Lightroom. So then what you do, keep it in 32-bit, you hit 
Tone in ACR, Adobe Camera Raw. You hit that and essentially it's going to create a file and bring it into Photoshop and then it's gonna flatten it and then it's gonna automatically bring it in to Adobe Camera Raw all whilst keeping it at 32 bit. So that is massive, massive tonal range. Now this may take some time, so just bear with it. Okay, so now you can see it's brought it in. It's, this is the file down here inside um, Photoshop. You can see it's a smart object. That's because it's referencing all three images now, which is incredibly powerful. And now inside Adobe Camera Raw, we can do whatever we want. So now if we hit auto, look at this that it's been able to do. It has created a stunning image using the entire tonal range of 32 bits of information, which is absolutely incredible. So now you can go through and make whatever changes you want to make. So you've got your contrast, you can really boost these highlights and shadows to the biggest extremes, and it's going to stay looking realistic and beautiful really quickly. Now, there's a few things that I would recommend to do in Adobe Camera Raw, and a few things I would not recommend doing. So first of all, do all your basic panel just here and get that sorted. Now, I wouldn't do anything too creative. Save that and do it inside Photoshop. So instead, what we're gonna do here, sharpening, definitely figure out what your sharpening is here. And to do that, if you go to 100%, it's gonna zoom into this image and now it's going to basically allow you to move around the image and you can see what it is actually doing to the image. You can see the detail that we've managed to capture this. So we can boost our sharpening up a little bit. I'm happy with that amount just there. This is blown out, you can see, because they've got a bit of a lens flare on that. So let's just zoom back out to 33%. There we go, so we can see it and you know, other things that I would do, now things you can't do is it's not gonna be able to look at which lens you took this with, but you can still do chromatic aberration. You can remove that if you have any of that. And you can also do your manual so you can change any of your distortion and things like that. So that's pretty simple how to do this. And let's just go fit in view. And remember, you have other things up here. You can you can brush onto here. So for example, down here, I might want to bring out more of the shadows. I don't need to, but say that we did. Select brush, and now I'm going to lift those shadows, and I can literally brush that over there, and I've just highlighted that one section to lift it up. But I'm not gonna to choose to do that, so I'm gonna hit delete, and it's gonna get rid. So I'm gonna hit right click, and I'm gonna delete that control point. There you go. And you've also got radial filters. You can do all sorts of things within this. So I've drawn a filter. I might want to bring my exposure down on this section. I can go outside and inside. So I've brought that down. Let's say we're gonna keep that. Um, so I've done some alterations and I really like the way that it works. Now all I need to do is hit OK. And now that's going to load this back into Photoshop with those edits, okay? Absolutely amazing, but it's a smart filter. And what that means is I've made those edits and I might go, mm, you know, I wanna go back and change this. All I have to do is double click this section down here and it's gonna reopen Adobe Camera Raw with all of those settings that I made. So now, by using this 32-bit model, it allows me to really make all the edits that I want to make pushing this image as much as I want. And now I'm in here, I can do other things to it. So now I could, so for example, I could change other elements. Like I could go in here and I could, so here I'm working on my levels. For example, I have a tutorial on how to do this. So I've done that. But what you are going to notice, and this is what's important, is most of these adjustment layers are actually grayed out. That's because they are not available inside 32-bit. And we know it's 32-bit because it tells you RGB, 32 bits, okay? So if we want to at this point, we're really happy, we feel like it's in a good place, we've made all the alterations we want to make, but now we want to start getting more clever, we want to add in some of the other of these filters that aren't available, well, it's amazing what we can do. All we have to do is image, mode, and convert to 16 bits. And it's gonna say, do you want to merge them all or not merge? Well. 
to change the, the bit depth, we have to merge this. So we're gonna do this and it's gonna allow you to do your toning again. And this is what's important. It's gonna kind of ruin the image because it's changed all those things, it's merged it down, it does a horrible job. So what you have to do is here, you just come to exposure and gamma, and then you make sure these are all at zero and it's gonna keep those settings that you would made in Adobe Camera Raw. You can see that there's absolutely no difference now with this. So this is really important at this level. Exposure and gamma, zero and one for gamma. Hit okay, and now what we're gonna see, we now have it as a layer, and we have all of our adjustments available, and we have all of our filters available. And that really is how to create an HDR correctly inside Photoshop. So, I hope this helped. You can see that there's a very specific way of doing this, but by doing it this way, you store the most amount of data until you're ready to crush it into 16 bits of information, uh, 16 or eight bits of information. Anyway, I hope this really helped. If it did, give me a thumbs up and definitely subscribe to my channel because I've got loads more tutorials coming in the future. This was Ed Gregory for photosincolor.com. I'm pointing again, theme channel. <laughs> what that was.